The durability of Jason Tatum is rare in today's load management friendly NBA. On a fractured left wrist, he's only sat out one of 25 games, averaging a league fourth most 30 and a half points. Likewise, the stability from Jalen Brown has been vital. He's the NBA's 12th leading scorer and is posting career highs in points, boards, dimes, field goal, and free throw percentage, approaching the midway point. In a 27-point blowout against their fellow number one seed in Phoenix, the Celtics starters combined for a plus-minus of plus 139. Boston led by 37 at half and by as many as 45. The C's all-time best offensive rating has steadily increased by the month. However, as JT said post-game, none of this means anything if the Celtics don't hang a banner. Before going in detail on all of that, to support the channel, subscribe and leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. Jalen Brown's numbers this month are on a different level, and while the 29.5 point per game average stands out, I want to focus on his improved decision making. On the year, his assists per night average is at a career most, however, Jalen's also turning the ball over at the highest clip of his career. But that hasn't been the case so far in December, Brown's posting 4.5 dimes each outing while turning it over just 1.5 times per night, a much better assist to turnover ratio than his overall output for the season as a whole. Of course this could change given the sample size is so damn small, but I thought it was necessary to break down what Jalen's doing so well at the moment in terms of valuing possession. Game before the blowout against Phoenix up north in Toronto, Jalen tied a season high in assists with 8 of them. For that entire game against Toronto, Jalen was deceptively mixing up his attacks and facilitations, generally taking what the defense gave him and thoroughly responding to adjustments on the fly from the opponent's scouting report. Obviously, Jalen's known for his scoring, but it opens up so much for the Celtic offense when he's manipulating game plans by making the correct passing reads. To open up for that facilitating, after consecutive buckets where he scores on tough floaters in the lane, next bucket for Brown comes on a full head of steam transition attack where he utilizes an in and out move to freeze Scotty Barnes, who still gets back the challenge, but the high extension from Brown on the lay-in fends him off. With the Raptors' defense then forced to overcommit and attempt to shut down those attacks, this high pick and roll sees OG leave Griffin by himself and attempt to trap Jalen. While this should have been a harder trap by Pascal and OG, nonetheless, Brown does a good job of reading the coverage as he calmly uses a crossover and hesitation before giving Blake a high bullet pass, simultaneously receiving an empty side pin down from Luke Cornett and a bounce pass entry from Marcus Smart while Cornett rolls. Brown realizes Thaddeus Young is far too up in his drop coverage and throws a high arcing lob to the green Cornett. That wherewithal is again displayed on this possession where, with Ananobi's pressure forcing Jalen to fumble it, Brown helps Marcus Smart attack the defensive weak point and Gary Trent Jr. after faking the drive with an off-handed momentum cross. Decisive take from Smart and excellent recognition from Brown. Same can be said to describe this full-sided pick and roll at the back end of the shot clock, but instead of Smart with the tough finish, it's Blake Griffin. This Spain pick and roll sees Griffin set a patented big body and now Jalen's got the game plan to ease up off him as Coloco's too low in drop, the opposite of what Thad was doing a few possessions earlier. With the rookie sagging off, Brown stops on a dime for the leaning back mid-range pull-up. A weak side down screen which was ran earlier, this time leads into a DHO with Blake Griffin who tosses it to Brown and slips the screen, forcing the defensive misdirection. Griffin's strong roll leaves Marcus Smart open who one two steps into a deep range bomb under the closeout of Van Vliet. Collecting it following the jump ball, this scramble allows us to see how naturally worried Toronto is about Brown as this screen capture shows four Raptor defenders in Van Vliet, Barnes, Siakam, and Coloco building Holding a wall around him, so he just kicks it out to Tatum with a sharp bullet for the easy spot up. It certainly helps your assist numbers when the man next to you on the wing is in the conversation to win both his first scoring title and MVP trophy, that being Jason Tatum. Crazy to believe Tatum's playing as well as he is while not being at 100%. Last month after Boston took down Detroit, Tatum said the wrist fracture he's currently dealing with is the same one he was dealing with in the postseason as he told the media, quote, same wrist, same hand, something a little different that we're just managing at the moment, nothing I gotta have surgery on, end quote. If it's something that's lingered since the playoffs, then surgery is maybe something that should be considered as you don't want any structural damage for the future, but ultimately we have to trust Tatum and the Celtics training staff to make the best decision regarding the wrist, and it does
doesn't seem like anything too serious, given Jason's current production, despite it not being the most serious injury. That doesn't mean we can't give kudos to Tatum for fighting through the bumps and bruises which come along with the unforgiving 82-game grind. Moving on, as on Wednesday night in the Valley, Batman was a game best plus 31. He made a perfect 6 of 6 from the field and 2 of 2 from distance. Whether it's locking up Denver's two-time MVP in the Joker, or holding Milwaukee's MVP in the Greek Freak in check, the Batman Grant Williams is a versatile stretch for who any franchise would want on their team. His bulkiness, grit, footwork, and ground coverage make him an extremely tough defender. Back in the playoffs, through the first two games of the Celtics' second round win against Milwaukee, Batman guarded Giannis for a total of 10 minutes and 20 seconds. Giannis shot 44.4% from the field in that span. Against any other Celtic, Giannis made 72.3% of his field goals. Against Denver two months before that, Batman helped the at the time soon to be named back to back most valuable player to 5 for 19 shooting in the first half and 8 for 23 on the night, Nicola's worst game of the year. I'm not sure if Grant gets the credit for being the elite 3 and D weapon that he is. Messages like this one from the Batman also display his leadership. And for us, in order for us to be special, we have to stay locked in at all hours, night in and night out. The best part about this team is that we take care of each other. Defensively, that's all we can accomplish. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> For today's question, where does Grant Williams rank among NBA role players? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Today's speaks winner is Len Shan, handcrafted wood signs, who says Rob Williams just adds another dimension to the Celtics on both ends of the floor. On defense, not only his shot blocking, but he takes all the pressure off Tatum, Brown, and company. On offense, lob threat, passing, rebounding, let's not forget depth. Now you'll have Grant Williams coming off the bench, less minutes for Tatum and Al Horford. Time Lord may not be your typical two-way player, but he impacts the game on both ends of the floor in his own way. Appreciate the comment, follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching, have a good one.